graphing tomorrow. Okay, so we're going to skip question one, but there's some basic information that I need you to know. We're going to be dealing with a new function, y equals a, b to the x. It is not a line. It is not a parabola. It is not a polynomial function. It is not a square root function. It is a brand new function. A represents a number, so does B. They're very important to this particular type of function. This is called an exponential function. The value of A since that's a number. If you're talking about a, a story problem, it would represent the starting amount. For instance, how much money did you start with? Or what population did you start with? Exponential functions can be used to model the growth of your money. They can also be used to model the growth of a disease or of a population. Because we talk about growing by a percentage or shrinking. Maybe we're going down by a percentage. When we get to graphing, which we'll see tomorrow, we will find out that the y-intercept is the a value. And I'll show you that in an example coming up. The b value has its own term. We call it the growth factor the growth factor. It controls whether something is going up or going down. Now here are two examples that you see on screen. One's in blue, one's in red. The key thing that you really, really need to realize is that every percentage starts out at 100%. Every value we start with, we can talk about 100% of that value. And then we could talk about going up a percentage, or we can talk about going down a percentage. But everything starts at that particular point, and most kids don't realize that. They think it starts out at 0%. So, for instance, if you said, you know, if the base price of an item, or let's say... Uh, let's say you wanted to buy something at a store and it costs you, it, uh, you look at the price and it's, it's uh, $20. Okay. Everything, if you want to figure out how much tax it's going to cost or whether there's a sale price on that item, we multiply by 100%. Now, what is the decimal equivalent of 100%? What is the decimal equivalent of 100%? You are correct, Mr. Brown. When we convert something to its decimal form, we move the decimal point over two places to the left. So the decimal version of 100% is 1. So that $20 item, 100% of that $20 item is $20. If I want to know tax on top of that, then I'm going to have to multiply by a number larger than 1. Yes. Okay, so I think you have a good point here, and I think you're going to see the answer to your question in a second. Do you know uh, how to add 7% to 100%? I'm sure you'd all say yes. You'd follow the blue line there, the blue arrow, and you'd say that's 107%. Do you guys know anything? In your life, where they add 7% to everything? Sales tax. Sales tax. Cigarettes, even worse. Cigarettes and, you know, fuel tax That's and alcohol tax. Those uh, percentages are higher. Um, government likes to take their money. They do. Um, now, 
Uh huh. Okay, so if I take a hundred percent and I lose eight percent, you have ninety-two percent. You can see that in the red. Now you'll notice that I also wrote in the purple the growth factors that you would get for a hundred and seven percent and also ninety-two percent. Notice that we move the decimal over two places to the left, 1.07 and 0.92. Now, to answer your question, if we had a population increase or a disease increase of 1%, then that would be 101, and then we would change that growth factor to 1.01, 1 .01. okay? Is that okay? So, like, 101% of the kids that's Correct. The formula. Now, I'm not saying... Hear me out, folks. I'm not saying we're talking about a 100% increase. A 100% increase is to double, which is exactly what I want for my money, but not for my diseases. I do not want them doubling. When you look at this particular question, question two, the value we focus on that B value, 0.92, that number is smaller than 1. So we know that it's exponential decay. What percent are you losing? Well, if you started at 100% and you went down to 92%, what percent did you lose? You lost 8%. So if it's anything Correct. It's a growth, which is what we want our money to do. Question three. I'm looking at that point six two. I know that it's exponential decay because it's smaller than one. What percent loss are we looking at? If I take 100 and take away 62, how much have we lost? Getting close. 38%. Right? 100. Take away 62 gives me a 38% loss. Question. Okay, now X represents, and a lot of times, X represents years or days or hours. It's a unit of time. And they, they haven't told us anything about the particular, this isn't a story problem. We haven't gotten to one of those situations yet, but we will. Now, this question also asks me for the Y-intercept. How do we find every Y-intercept in the universe? What do we plug in for X? Zero. <coughs> And what is 0.62 to the zero power? What is 0.62? It is not zero. 0.62 to the zero. Nope. 0.62 to the zero. Anything to the zero, folks. One. I thought I had it up on screen. Never mind. <laughs> At least you were thinking. I, I like the fact that you were thinking. So what is 4 times 1? 4. That's sure. Now, for those of you who didn't want to go through the process of thinking about plugging in 0, can't we just look at the number that's out in front? That's exactly what we're doing. That's what's outside there. That is your y-intercept every single time. No, nah, no. You're talking about multiplying a linear function times an exponential function. That's That would be really cool, but that's not something we're going to see. Will you see that in uh, mm, uh, You'd have to go a lot higher to see stuff like that. I, I don't know what it would look like, to be quite honest.
I have seen questions like this show up on the SAT. What does that negative do to the 4 over 1? It flips it. So it becomes 1 quarter to the x power. Is that exponential growth or decay? How do we know it's decay? Because it's less than 1. Now, I, you can write it as a decimal, right? You could write 0.25 to the x instead of a fraction. Now, do you realize what percentage loss that would be? You're at that 100%. You take away 25, and that's a 75% loss. That is definitely what you do not want your money doing. Correct. But it's all, it all goes back to this, this idea where we start at 100%, we went down to 25%, how much did we lose? That's the idea. I will keep drawing that visual because everybody needs to see we're at 100, we dropped to 25, how much did we lose? Most of you get it when you start thinking in terms of that visual. What's the y-intercept? What's the y-intercept to this question? It's a 1, folks. And I tried to draw that in purple for you there. Remember how we talked about there being a number out in front? When you don't see the number out in front, that's because it's a 1. Nobody felt like writing it. <laughs> Any questions on any of these so far? Okay, now, I'll, I'll try to let you look ahead at, your, at either your notes. Um, we have, what is it, 12,000 students that we're dealing with? And it's an increase of 5%. I'll give it away if I if I scroll up. So if we're going to write an equation for this, we've got 12,000 for the starting amount. What are we going to put in here? If it's an increase of 5%. Okay, the most common wrong answer is this one right here. I heard several of you say the correct answer, but I see kids do this. And what that tells me is that they think that a growth factor starts from 0%, not 100%. Because we all know that it starts at 100%, and in this case, it's going up by 5%, so that's 105%. Which is why you guys were right when you said 1.05. Now... For those of you who think it's 0 0.05, which I hope there are none of you in this room, what percentage loss would that be? What percentage loss? 95%. Folks, we're talking zombie apocalypse going on here. Because you just lost 95% of the population, and then guess what's going to happen the next year? Another 95%. And then another 95%. And then another 95%. There's not going to be a whole lot of people left in a short amount of time. In this case, folks, you were right, though. The growth factor was 1.05. Now, what would you plug in for X if I wanted to know the population next year? Next year. One year from now, what would you plug in for X? One. Okay, take your calculators, right? Or your, if you, if you, computer, or even if you have a phone, jump over to your calculator on your phone. Uh, you need to know how to type this on something that you can use for the test. So your phone isn't going to be a good option for the test, but you can use it now if you need to. Okay, so 12,000 parentheses, 1.05 parentheses to the first power.
12,000 parenthesis 1.05, and then put a 1 for that exponent up there. So what did we end up with? 12,000 what? 600. That's right. Now what would we end up with if we wanted to know 22 years from now? What, what would we... So change that 1 in your, in your calculations. Change it from 1 year to 22 years. 12,000. Water, yep. <laughs> well, we knew that was the answer. The first what? what did I do to the government? <laughs> well, the government should stop wasting money on stupid crap. They should. Well, I know there's lots of things that they should stop. Small. Cut way back on a lot of things, man. So 35,103. 35,103 is what you should have gotten if you plugged in 22. Hopefully, you feel comfortable plugging in those numbers. Now, on that next question... Question six, in 2004, the amount of money spent at restaurants in a certain country has increased at a rate of 7% each year. In 2004, about $280 billion was spent at restaurants. If the trend continues, about how much will be spent at restaurants in 2019? What's the difference between 2004 and 2019? How many years? 15 years. Well, if we're talking about 7% increase, Is that per year? that's per year. So let me see if I can, man, I don't have a lot of space here. Zoom in really far. I'll just do it in this corner. So, yeah, it will be when I zoom back out. So we got 100% and we're going up 7%. What number would that be? 107%, right? So as a decimal, 1.07, exactly, because you move it over two places. So that is the B value. So we have our equation. Now, we're going to put this in terms of billions of dollars, so the starting amount is just going to be 280. I'm not going to write a bunch of zeros. You did? Congratulations. Okay. You guys told me that we're talking about 15 years from 2004 to 2019. So tell me, how much, how many billions of dollars will we have in money? What? Um, 772.5 billion dollars. So double check on how you typed it. Now, if you're using a phone and you're not using something that looks like this, you might want to do this part first and then multiply times 280 when you get done. Because um, I'm guessing that you, it doesn't, it's not as easy to type that yeah, using a phone. So I would suggest you just go with order of operations, exponents first, and then multiplication second. Okay, so that's, that's the question that we had down here on question six.
Okay, question seven. Let's see if I can zoom in and use some space. What was the starting amount on question uh, seven on the kilopascals? How much did we start with? How many kilopascals, those of you who have it in front of you? 97 was the starting amount, and that was at sea level. Then it said something like this. Every 1,000 kilometers of altitude, we lose 11.5%. We lose 11.5%. So if I'm at 100% and I go down 11.5%, what percent am I at? Eighty eight point five, right? So what number am I going to use in here? Point eight eight five. You're exactly right. Did it say how many years we're talking about here? No, it said something about for every one thousand feet. Well, how many, how many jumps is 4,000 feet would be how many steps? Each, Each step is 1,000. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. How many steps? Four. So your exponent, folks, is a four. Use your machine and see if we can come up with the value. 97, parentheses, 0.885. To the fourth. Something less than 60. What'd you get? 59.5. We are going to skip the uh, number 8, at least for now. We'll skip number 8. Maybe we'll use some of the space up here for number 9. Um, well, we got some space right there. All right, tell me what Tell me what kind of equation we've got going on here for number nine. Write an exponential function to model the situation. A population of 110,000. Y equals what? What are we putting in front? 110,000, yep. It's growing at 4%, so that's 1.04, good. For 14 years, right? So up here, you're going to put a 14. So let's I'm 
Mr. Morris, what'd you come up with? Yeah. Did you? Okay, I didn't get that. I got some north, somewhere north of a hundred and ninety thousand. Oh, you got that too. Oh, that is so cool. So that's the population I ended up with for fourteen years. Okay, now, question 10. For the given annual rate of change, find the corresponding growth or decay factor. Okay, now, this one confuses a lot of kids. If we're going up 500%, the most common wrong answer here is B equals 5. That is the most common wrong answer. Remember, we start with 100%, and if we're going up 500%, which I would love my money to do, folks, 600% is what you'd be at, so the multiplier would be 6. If you're increasing 500%, you start out with the original amount of money you have, then you're going to add 500%. You're going to have a total of 600% of your money, which is really cool. Yeah, so you'd be multiplying your money by six. If you could do that every year, you'd be buying your own island in a short amount of time, more than likely. Okay? Um, unless you died first. <laughs> um, you know, people don't like it if you end up, you know, multiplying your own money by six and they aren't. This is an easy one, 1 1.7, nicely done. Okay, 1.7. Uh, as a separate question, which is not listed, I'm going to give you another one. What if it said that it was going down by 35%? What if it said it was going down by 35%? That's true. If you're starting out at 100% and you're going down 35%, you'll be landing at 65%. So that means you've got a B value of 0.65. Great observation. I'll come around and check your notes because that's as far as I want to go today. And we will do more tomorrow.